<laughs> Bonjour, Nadia. Comment ça va? Ça va très bien. Uh, so, thank you so much for being with us today. You know, this, um, this meeting will be shared in, uh, uh, with all my students uh, at Université Laval, but not only with them. Uh, here in North America and Canada, we're super interested in what you're doing and the whole learning experience uh, design movement um, that is changing, you know, how we see instructional design and how we see performance uh, improvement, etc. So, uh, we're super happy to have you with us today. Uh, let's start with uh, who are you? Well, thank you uh, for uh, for inviting me. It's great to be here. Um, so I'm Niels. I'm uh, I'm from the Netherlands, and I've been a learning experience design pioneer for the last 13 years. And before I got started with learning experience design, I was actually a graphic designer and interaction designer. And um, so that's really my background. I'm a creative professional. I started teaching as well uh, at several Dutch universities. And when I started to combine you know, my perspective as a designer with the world of education, I kind of uh, ended up with designing learning experiences. So that's kind of my background. So what is learning experience design? That's a good question. Um, so basically, uh, it's in essence, it's designing experiences people learn from. But what's really important is that, like I said, it's a design discipline. So uh, you use uh, design methods and tools and skills to shape this experience. And uh, you, of course, you want to ensure that this 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 experience is uh, you know does its job. You know that people learn from this experience, and there are two key elements there. So you design experiences people learn from um, in a human centered way, and also a goal oriented way. So human centered means that you really focus on the people who participate in this experience, primarily the learner but also anyone else, uh, teacher, uh, uh, friends, family, anyone involved, other stakeholders. Um, and you try to put those people at the center of your design and also at the center of your design process. So human-centered design is a very important part of learning experience design, but also goal-oriented design, understanding what goals you want to achieve and enabling uh, learners and, and stakeholders to achieve those goals uh, with uh, the learning experience that you design for them. Okay. So but, that's, that's yeah. yeah. And and when you talk about instructional design, like many will tell you, especially when we follow, you know, Adi and you start with the analysis and we talk about, you know, like when you're doing your analysis, you're focusing on learners. Like you need to know who, who your learners are. You focus on all the objectives, whether learning or performance objectives. So how is learning experience design different from the, what we used to know, you know, like the instructional design that also focuses yeah. on learners and we design for learners? Yeah, well, um, what I've noticed, um, because this is a very hot topic, and um, just to be clear, I am not anti-instructional design. I, I know a lot of great instructional designers <laughs> like you. Um, um, but really, the most important difference is that it comes from a different place. It comes from the creative design disciplines. So um, if you were to, uh, to uh, compare instructional design to a scientist... We, if you, have, you know, instructional design is more scientific. It's structural. It's it's um, uh, yeah. It's more. It's 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 often applied form of science. Then a, a learning experience designer is more comparable to an artist, where you are applying arts to create something different, new, uh, exciting. Um, so you use more of an arts perspective instead of a scientific perspective. And you can imagine that if you were to give the same assignment to a scientist and to an artist to, to create something, they would have a different process and they would have different results. And both are valuable and both can be meaningful, but they will be different. And that's in essence, the difference between the approach of instructional design and learning experience design. Um, what I've noticed, um, because I trained quite a lot of instructional designers, 
is that because you use a, a different design process and you use uh, you have a different focus and you also use different skills and 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 and, and uh, tools um, they often tend to struggle with implementing their own expertise in these uh, in a new way of working basically in a w new way of thinking um, so on the on the surface they look quite similar um, but underneath you know the way everything works is quite different so um, uh, yeah so it's 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 basically uh, the artistic approach versus the scientific approach and yeah so so if we because you you mentioned the different processes so how can you describe the processes of learning experience design if you want you know like what are the processes how is the, the art approach how do we approach a project yeah or a well problem? um yeah well the, the there are, are a, a couple of main uh, elements in every design process um, it starts with uh, understanding what you are trying to achieve. So having a certain question you want to answer or a, a, a problem you want to solve. Um, once you know what you're trying to achieve, then you research uh, and you use design research for that. Uh, you research who's the learner, who are the people involved in this experience, but also if we want to achieve this, you know, what exactly would people need to be able to do or to 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 know um so you you want to research the outcome you're trying to achieve so what are all the steps that you might need to 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 go through in order to get to a certain outcome and who's the person going that going to be that's going to be doing this in in what context is this going to happen now when you do design research it's really not just about uh, gathering data about, uh, let's say, uh, the, the cognitive level of 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 a of a of a student, but also really very much about uh, who who these people are, what motivates them, uh, what kind what kind of uh, emotions they are feeling, you know, just in general, but also if within the experience you're designing, so the emotional layer. Is also really important, and that requires empathy. So, empathizing with your learner is something that's that's quite common in in uh, in many design disciplines, where you want to kind of feel what your target audience is feeling, so you know when you design something for them that they are going to have the right uh, experience. Um, and so, so empathy is important and understanding that what you are designing is going to impact a person's life. And um, so as a learning experience designer, you have a certain um, responsibility for a small part of someone's life. So a lot has happened before and a lot is going to happen afterwards. But, you know, when, when they leave, when they leave your learning experience, they are going to be changed and that's going to impact hopefully in a positive way, the rest of their lives. So um, that requires a very, a more holistic, personal, emotional uh, uh, perspective on, on how and who you design for. So that's, that's the research part. Uh, and then you start designing. And a very important part of design is ideation. And what I've noticed with instructional designers is that they are very good at understanding uh, what is needed for someone to, to get to a certain point and what kind of options are best, they, what, what options they would need to pick, what kind of format or tool you could use to get there. And for a learning experience designer, uh, the, 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 it's really about not picking the best options, but really creating your own options. And um, that's also where the link to the artist comes from. You know, an artist starts with an empty canvas and just starts creating and ends up with a unique painting or sculpture. And the learning experience designer goes through a similar creative process where you just, uh, you can come up with anything, any kind of experience. And finally you end up with what's, in, you know, uh, what you think is the best possible experience. So you design that, you, you have your ideas, 
you pick the best ones, you create a, a design, you prototype your design, you test it, and you go through the cycle again. So it's an iterative process. And um, especially the iterative character can sometimes be challenging for people who are not used to it because it can be really uh, a bit daunting not to know where you're going to end up. Uh, so you start with a certain goal and you just try stuff, you create something, it can be experimental and you learn from it. So you, as a learning experience designer, you need to be, uh, you shouldn't be afraid to fail, that's for sure. So you can try stuff and see what happens and kind of push the boundaries there. And so those are the steps uh, from your question to your research or design development, prototyping, uh, so that developing, developing a prototype, testing it, and then going back until it's ready to launch. And that's, that's the essence of it. Um, there can be more smaller steps in between and you can have uh, different types of research. You can have uh, different types of prototypes. Um, you can involve the learner in each of these steps as much as possible and, and other stakeholders. So it's, it's, those are universal steps, but each individual design process will be different. It's, uh, it's amazing what you're saying. So going back to your first uh, point, when you talked about how it's important that we're, we acknowledge the fact that we're touching actually the life of, of people. And this is exactly what I say to my students and why I'm super proud to be in this domain, because I tell them not only this person will be affected, because someone who can't perform, let's say, at his job for any reason, that will stress this person. They will go back to their family. They won't be able to focus on their family or whatever, you know, whether they are, have kids or parents or so that will affect the family. So actually, when we help somebody with our, you know, solutions to perform in their job or to be able to learn and give them this confidence and be able to perform, they will go back home maybe with, you know, less stress or that will yeah. affect positive impact positively on their life outside work, right? Because you can never yeah. separate work and family life. This is, this is like, we, we noticed that this is impossible. So we're not only affecting one individual, we're actually affecting the whole system around uh, this person. This is like, what you're saying is amazing. I want to challenge you with a question and um, I'm just so you know, I'm originally an interior designer and a graphic designer. So I spent many, many, many years before as a graphic designer. So I understand, you know, the whole process of starting and understanding what the client and the image and, you know, like the whole message that you want to, to create and what are the needs of our client and really empathize with this person, not about what I would like to design, but actually what they need and what they want and really going through this, this uh, empty canvas and, and trying stuff and experimenting with ideas. But you will have some people who will tell you, okay, but why should we, or should you always reinvent the wheel? Because we already have some solutions that proven, you know, you have evidence based that these solutions work. So yeah. should we always reinvent the wheel or, you know, like how, how much should we rely on solutions that were proven to be working and how much, you know, space we have to give to our, you know, like going back to an empty canvas and restart uh, thinking and, you know, imagining solutions? Well, that's a great question because I think, um, you know, it wouldn't make sense if something works really well to change it. Um, so most of my clients are people who have a uh, situation that doesn't, where it doesn't work well right now and they just can't find a solution. There's not a standard solution or a, you know, they can just get a course or anything or a tool that works and solves their problem. So they need, so we are called when, when a standard solution uh, isn't available. Um, but if, if something works well, there's, of course, there's always room for improvement. So um, you can always, uh, let's say, um, a, 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 from a teacher's perspective, let's say you're teaching your classes and students are satisfied and the results are good. Um, if you take the time once to talk to a couple of students and just ask them, uh, how is this for you as an experience? 
um, and uh, really listen to what they are going through. Um, I'm sure they will come up with certain things where they say, well, I didn't really like this part or this was really excellent. I would like to do more of that. Or maybe they will say, well, um, it's a great class, but it's really in the middle of a very hectic, uh, you know, uh, part of the of the curriculum. So it's very busy. So there, so you can make small changes. But as soon as you start talking to people about and going deeper into what the experience is like for them, you will always discover ways to improve these these experiences. And um, then you can just build on what you've got. And I actually do a really fun exercise with um, people that I train, especially when I train teachers and trainers. Um, I ask them to, uh, because teachers and trainers always understand why what they are doing is important, you know, and, and they understand, well, this part is a bit boring, but it's really important because otherwise you wouldn't understand the next part or, but that doesn't make sense to the students. So what I ask them to do is to take the most boring part of their, uh, of their class and turn that most boring part into the most exciting part. And for two reasons. First of all, because it's a nice challenge for them as a design challenge. So I can guide them through the design process and come up with something that really works. But also because there's a huge gain there. You know, the worst part becomes the best part. Um, so, um, and that's a great way to open people's eyes to show that, um, that you can sometimes radically improve without changing everything. Yeah. In, in, uh, on your website, in one of the documents you talk, I think about, um, it's really in, in the document that discusses the, the canvas, you talk about the design that is, uh, you have this distinguish, like you distinguish between teaching and the designer. So the teacher and the designer, and you talk about the design, how the design, it's not about you, it's really about your learners. <laughs> so yeah, can you yeah. talk a bit more about this? Because it's like, it follows your uh, your what you were saying about it, it is important it has to be done and it's usually done in a in a boring way because the teacher thinks that this is how things like it has to be passed but it's yeah. not really about the teacher right so can you can you elaborate a bit about that the yeah. difference between uh, the designer and the teacher yeah so um both the teacher and the designer uh are not as important as the learner um, so the learner is always uh, is always number one. So it should always be the star of the show in, in, in the way I like to call it. And um, as a teacher, you have certain author uh, 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 what do you call it? Um, uh, I'm looking for the right word. Um, well, let's just put it differently. As a teacher, you're the expert. So yeah, authority, that's the word. So as a, as a teacher, you have a certain authority uh, because you are the expert and students are there to learn from you and with you. Um, and as a designer, you are not the expert. You are the person serving everyone else. So you're serving the, the, the learner, but you're also serving the, the client or you're serving the teacher and you're providing them with the best possible solution, the best possible learning experience. And um, being able to uh, understand that you are not as important as someone else and that you are really there to help them um, is, uh, is a great virtue. Uh, it, and, and if you, you know, but as a teacher, that can be a bit scary sometimes because you, know, you are the expert once again. So, um, I think uh, as soon as uh, there is a, uh, a, a there's a good communication between the student and the teachers on a also more personal level about how the the the, 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 the teaching is impacting uh, uh, people's lives, um, and it sounds a bit a bit heavy now, but really uh, as soon as you really start to have that conversation, 
the way designers talk to their uh, to the people they design for, um, then you start to understand that you know there are better ways to help your students maybe, and um, uh, and the students uh, will also understand better why you're doing what you're doing, and so your um, your expertise is still valued, but you don't have to maybe have all, all the answers or know everything. Um, and yeah, so it's a bit, you, you're, it's a bit vulnerable, but, um, and, and scary sometimes, yeah. but it's really nice to, to, to admit to yourself. I don't have to know everything. I don't have to, I can sometimes just say, well, let's figure it out together. And uh you know, that's, that's, that's authentic and that, that really works. Exactly. Because no one can actually know everything. Like this is, this is quite impossible. So uh, I'm going to move to my next question where I ask you, uh, what can you share about uh, like examples of uh, the application of LXD in different contexts and some success stories? So because in my, again, just to remind you uh, of the, the audience who will be watching this video, these are uh, instructional designers in the making. So these are students who are now in their education technology program. So they're either doing a diploma or a master's or even a PhD in education technology. And they've been hearing about, like they're learning the processes of uh, instructional design. And now I'm presenting them and exposing them to learning experience design. So what are some examples of the application of LXD in different contexts, because they will be working in many, 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 as you know, in, in different contexts. They won't only be working in educational context, but also in, you know, all the different um, sectors. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, let's start with a, a, uh, a smaller example to, to, and build from there. Because, um, you know, learning experiences can be any kind of experience. So it, it can take any shape or form or size. So um, everyone's familiar with e-learning. Uh, and e-learning is sometimes synonymous with boring. Uh, because, you know, if e-learning is done in a, a traditional standard way, it's just a lot of text and images and slides and just next, 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 next. Now, that was the kind of course that we were presented with by a client and, this, and the client said, we, could you turn this into something appealing and exciting? And um, there are many ways you can do that, but still you are limited often by, uh, for instance, the tools you can use. So we, were, uh, we had to work with a specific uh, e-learning authoring tool because of their uh, learning management system. So then you have a certain, uh, they have certain limitations. And within those limitations, you want to find out how can I improve this quality, the quality of this experience, uh, you know, on a maximum level. So there were many small things we did. Um, first or larger things. So we took, because there was a course and everything was in it, all the content was there. But content is never really that, that important to me the goals and the outcome are what matter to me and content are just a, a, uh, a an aspect of, of a learning experience, but not really leading in that sense. So we looked at all the content and we thought about, okay, so what exactly are we trying to achieve here? So we rewrote the goals that we are trying to achieve uh, to more practical and realistic and, and human-centered goals instead of saying this is the expertise we want them to learn saying this would be relevant for the learner so you rewrite uh, the learning objectives and you come up with a different learning outcome based on those learning objectives so that's one step so but in the terms of the design that we created storytelling was key because as soon as you start to take you know bits of content that are not really related and you put them into a logical uh, recognizable story it starts to make sense so we created a whole scenario of, of, of where we had different stories uh, that would play out where you would come across the, the all the, the the topics that would need to be covered um 
and do it in a way where there's, uh, there are, we would offer different forms of interaction. So within the e-learning, you wouldn't just be clicking next and then having a quiz at the end. But you would, uh, this was about color theory, about the way, uh, by the way. And so, but you would have all these fun ways to interact with color, mixing colors, uh, colors in interior, uh, all kinds of stuff, the way paint is made. And um, so we rewrote the, the, the objectives and the outcome, restructured it and put it into stories that make sense, added uh, different forms of interaction. Um, some uh, animation, visualization to, to you know, make it come alive. And audio design, by the way, as well, is also very important, you know, for, for, for a certain atmosphere or auditive feedback. Um, and um, finally, we also thought about, well, finally, we did that before, but uh, we, we also thought about how are people, where are people going to be um, experiencing this? in the office, at home, um, on their lunch break, uh, because their boss says so in a small room somewhere. So uh, this is a multinational company we work for. So they have offices around the world. So we did a lot of research into who are the, these people? Um, where would they uh, be taking this course? And how would that, you know, uh, kind of interrupt their daily, uh, their daily lives? So um, we also thought about the emotions that come into play when you do e-learning. So these people would either, for instance, there are in South America, the, it's quite normal what we've learned from, from, uh, from that company is that, you know, the boss says, you have to learn this and this right now, go do it. And that's quite different from, from Europe, for instance. Um, so there's a chance that people would enter this learning experience with a negative emotion of, you know, I have to do this, I don't want to. So the first slide, we started with uh, a question you couldn't answer wrong. It was just a personal question and you would get more of a, a kind of, surprise the learner that this is going to be very different from what you expected. So um, from the way we started and also uh, that, that's really designed to, to take these negative emotions into account and turn them into you know, surprise and then positive. Oh, this is fun. I actually want to do this. So we designed for that emotional um, path. And finally, um, we looked for uh, adding activities outside of the digital domain. So we asked some questions or we had some assignments. This was about color, for example. Um, go outside, take a picture of an object or something with a specific color and share it in, on, the, on the corporate network, on the internet, and explain why you, you took this picture. And the fun thing is that it's a really simple exercise, but it really takes people out of their sitting behind the, 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 their computer, going outside, taking a picture, being aware of the fact that this color plays a role in my life. It's important. It makes me feel happy. It makes me remember certain things. Um, and because they shared these experiences of taking these pictures, um, the whole uh, perception of the course also changed. So people got excited about it and they wanted to participate in this course because there was fun stuff going on and, and they were seeing some meaningful interaction. So that's a long story of a short example. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing because as you said, it's not about the content. It's, it's not about even the, you know, like the, 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 the theory of you know like how you will design the the e-learning program it's really about thinking of the perceptions of the people who will be taking the course because as you said if they were demotivated from the beginning even if you have the best design at, and, and you know and the best content they won't be learning so it's a like it's an amazing story <laughs> and an amazing, amazing example that you're sharing and it, it's amazing point so just to go a bit deeper, how do you know your learners? Because 
you're really doing something that is really focused on the learners. And this could be a challenge in many contexts. So you also have some clients who won't give you access to the learners, for example. And even when you have access, you can't cover everyone. So how do you process? Like, how do you proceed with, um, what do you do to know your learners? Well, you do two things. The, the first one is you try to get as much access to, uh, to the people you have to get, you want to get to know. And sometimes you can spend a lot of time with the actual learners which is ideal. You go there, you interview them, you, you, you do uh, uh, what's called contextual observation. So you see them in their, in their natural surroundings, they're, 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 they're at the office or in school or, uh, or even at home if necessary. And um, you just try to have a meaningful uh, interaction with them, a, a great conversation, or uh, you see things happening and you ask right, try to ask the right questions. And those questions um, don't don't necessarily have to do with the the learning objectives you're 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 looking. You really have to do with um, getting to know these people. And everyone understands that if you have a friendship, over time you, you, you the relation deepens and strengthens because you get to know each other better. And getting to know someone relatively quickly is is also a skill. And it really takes, uh, you know, an open mind, but also skill to ask questions and to listen very, very carefully. So whenever I'm talking to learners or to anyone or stakeholders, I try to listen more than I ask questions. And um, so that's part one. And so coming as close as possible. Sometimes you can just talk to the client who knows these people. But still, then you have to ask the right questions and gather the right data. And, um, and you can combine that with desktop research because, you know, there's always information available about certain age groups or certain countries or, you know, so you can just, if you take the, 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 the quantitative data and add your qualitative data to it from your interviews and your observations, then you start to paint a picture. And sometimes you have to work with a little of, a bit of information in the sense that you don't have enough, that much access, but uh, th but still you're giving it your best shot. So then you have to work with at least a couple of assumptions, but where do you have a lot of information or not? As soon as you start designing, uh, you really should, uh, you want to test your design with the people are, who are going to use it. So if that's possible, you can learn a lot from that as well. And because you're working in an iterative process, you can just share a quick paper prototype, show it to them, and even long distance uh, quite as easily, um, and just learn from that and learn from how they interact with your design and with your how they react to your ideas and 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 get to know them that way. So have involvement in the research phase and at least in the testing phase uh, as, as, a, as a minimum. And if you don't have, if in the worst case scenario, just go talk to people who are quite similar to them. <laughs> you know, if it's, I don't know, if it's, uh, if it's someone from Germany, for instance, uh, uh, women between 50 and 60, I would go to a Dutch woman between in that age group and just talk and see you know try uh, try my best see what see what you can find out and especially with testing it's always better to test you can better test a number of times with people who are a bit similar to the people you want to be tested with than have one test with someone specifically in your target group and you know uh, so yeah you know, it's, uh, there's an ideal scenario for everything, but um, just work with the limitations you have. That brings me to the question, because you were talking about, you know, the importance of listening and, you know, like really understanding your, like how to approach and asking the right questions and et cetera. So that brings me to the competencies or the skills or the knowledge, you know, that learning experience designers should have. 
you know, like, or should develop in order for them yeah. to really succeed in a project and really answer to the needs of the learners. So yeah. what are these competencies according to you? Well, I think most of them are in line with the, the, the quite common uh, uh, competencies of, of, of designers. So uh, no, designers are known for seeing things a bit differently, you know, maybe having ideas that other people don't have, you know, some creative ideas. So the way you perceive the world around you, you want to have these kind of sensors of, you know, feel the, 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 the mood or feel the, uh, you know, read between the lines. For instance, like so when I'm interviewing someone, you know, it's not just about what they say, but also about, you know, their, their body language. And sometimes you can pick, pick up on small things. And, you know, a sharp eye is, is a quality of a designer. You know, to see certain, you have, have an idea of the bigger picture, but also zoom in on some details, see some patterns, uh, discover um, certain shapes. Or, you know, um, so how you see things is really important as a designer. Just to think about any fashion designer. You know, they look at the world around them, it inspires them, and they turn it into fashion. Well, I look at the world around me, and I turn it into learning experiences. So that's that's a very important skill. Also, the way you 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 uh, your 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 vision or the way you look at things is really important because when you design something, like being a graphic designer like yourself, you oh keep looking at your designs over and over and. Why are you able to see how it can be improved when someone else who's not trained can't see it? So they say, well, it looks nice, it's done. And you say, no, it can be improved and it can be improved more and more. So that's, that's a very important skill to be able to look at your own work, to criticize it and to, to improve it. Um, knowledge is... Um, for a learning experience designer, of course, you want have to understand how people learn, but that's a very broad spectrum of, 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 of knowledge. So I would say the most important part is to get to know more about how people learn from what they experience. And um, that's quite general in some sense, in some ways, but that's one of the reasons why I love to work with some certain educational uh, experts um, because I'm not going to tell them how to learn, how to teach, uh, how children learn to speak, for instance. I don't know everything about that. There's a lot of science behind that, but I am able to work with them and design something probably more exciting than they might be able to come up with. So um, Understand, have a decent understanding of, of how people learn from what they experience. And then, um, so I talked about the, the perspective and, and some knowledge, uh, so, uh, but skills, um, I think just being able to visualize stuff is really powerful on many levels. You don't have to become a, a uh, someone who may, you know, can design complete user interfaces or, 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 uh, other graphic designs but, but you should be able to at least mix make something look appealing or f functional or uh, and also to take your thoughts and turn them into, into some kind of visualization because if you're only working textual you're missing a large part of uh, of how to convey a message because as a designer conveying your message is key you know, as a graphic designer, you can design a poster. If it doesn't convey the message, you're screwed. Um, and this goes for, you know, if you can't convey your message to the client, you have a problem. If you can't convey it to the uh, target audience, you have a problem. So that's, that's a very important skill to communicate, to communicate your ideas, to communicate your designs. Um, and, um, and then... Also, I always look at inside knowledge, skill, and behavior. So inside has more to do with the perspective that I just talked about, knowledge and skill we just talked about. Um, the behavior, like I said, you really want to uh, keep a, a beginner's mind. Uh, I didn't say it before, but we want to keep an open mind, which means understand that you have to start over 
and that you have to, you can't just rely on everything you've done before because now the learner is different, the times have changed, the situation is different. So um, always um, try to start from scratch in that sense and, and reinvent yourself. Um, when I train people, uh, my goal is to help them reinvent themselves more or less going from, let's say, user experience designer to learning experience designer or instructional designer to learning experience designer or teacher, you know. And, um, but once they are a learning experience designer, you have to keep reinventing yourself in a way um, to stay relevant, original, or fresh. Um, so that's really important. Uh, it's not that if you have a certain uh, collection of competencies, you're done and you're set for life because times are going to change and you are going to change. And there are new design methods coming up and there are new tools and perspectives. And so, yeah, just always keep an open mind and, and, and uh, remain critical in a positive way of yourself and um, so you can always improve your own competencies uh, as you try to improve other people's competencies. Competencies. Yeah, this is amazing because you see many design, not designers, but really in our domain who sometimes they fall into their own biases and they think that, you know, like I was successful in this project because I used these solutions or whatever right and this is how things work and because they feel comfortable in what they've done before uh, they might be prisoners of that instead of as you said put that on a side and rethink the project based on what's new with the new group of learners the new objectives etc so this is yeah. this is this is really great so my, my following question is that this is like what you're saying now and really focusing on your group of learners, regardless of the context. And you're talking about emotions, you're talking about their state of being, you're talking about, you know, like we're going through COVID and we're going through this pandemic. And we know that instructional designers or learning experience designers, like the whole domain is really now at the forefront because we have, before COVID, we also had the digital transformation that is changing, you know, like the description of jobs in all contexts. And many people need to go through the reskilling and upskilling and, you know, like all the stuff. And with COVID also with the pandemic, many people are losing their jobs and others that, you know, other jobs that are being created or something and they have to move. So training is really at the forefront, but you also have the, you know, like the stress, the anxiety, um, the fear, mm -hmm of the future while going through this transformation. So how do you think learning experience design and this mindset and this framework can actually help in this very specific, uh, you know, pandemic that we're going through and this very specific context? Yeah, well, um, it's clear that these are really challenging times. And, um, uh, I see, you know, besides all the, uh, the, there's a lot of personal drama, of course, and, 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 uh, and, and, but I also see certain positive elements because I, you know, change is hard, but as soon as you have no choice, then you have to change. So the ability to change is, and the willingness to change is there right now. And what I learn, what I see uh, from a lot of people that I interact with, whether it's in training or just people who send me messages or um, is that they feel like um, learning experience design is an opportunity for them to improve themselves and, and other people's lives. Um, because of the, um, basically the creative freedom it offers. Uh, so if you are able to basically look at any any kind of situation and do it in a and design in a human centered way that we talked about, really focus on people on what they are going going through, what they need, and go beyond uh, delivering content towards offering them a valuable and meaningful and powerful learning experience. 
that can benefit them in many ways that which we also talked about you know it's not just about being finding a different job it's about maybe being a better father or uh, having less stress um, the focusing on people and what they are experiencing and understanding how your experience will play a part in that specific in those specific lives is a great opportunity to improve people's lives and um i'm not saying it's the only one to improve people's lives but it's something that i'm really excited about it's something that 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 seems to work uh, for a lot of people so um uh the, 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 the design principles the, the, of, of learning experience design are universal. They can be applied to any type of, of context or situation. So um, I think just because the situation has become more complex and more challenging, uh, that doesn't change these principles. It only uh, allows you to be uh, of service to people on an even, even more profound level. So um, I think, you know, we need creativity. We need different solutions, different ideas. And having learning experience as a framework will not only um, uh, kind of foster that creativity, but also align it. Because you know, I, I often say, you know, being creative is fun, but just being creative isn't enough. You need to, guide, you know, you need to focus your creativity to get to a certain point and that's what the the, the whole framework the whole structure you know the tools the methods do you you are not just being creative you are focusing your creativity on finding a solution to a problem or answering a question which improves people's lives and which uh, helps them you know to to develop themselves in any way so yeah that's that's why, I, yeah, that's why I'm quite hopeful for the future because I, I see so much enthusiasm among people to, to improve things and to take a, a, a terrible crisis and learn from it and say, well, now we're going to not just try to do things the way they were, we're going to try to make things even better than they were. So that's what I hope to uh, to see in the fu near future and also what I see happening right now. Niels, um, th that was an amazing uh, meeting and um, your, you, like the discussion was amazing that uh, your answers were, they will be super helpful for my class, but you know, like everyone who will be listening to, um, to our conversation do you have any last words for my students first and the whole, you know, like the Canadian community? Well, for your students, um, first of all, I think it's great that you're pursuing, the, you know, these, these opportunities, the, the, uh, this kind of career and the fact that you are um, interested in, in, in creating something for someone else, which improves their lives shows kind of what motivates you and possibly learning experience design can um can be a motivator you know can be something that makes not just enables you to create better learning experiences but also offers a really uh enjoyable and gratifying design process because um as much as i talk about you know the learner being important and 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 uh you know for you as a student right now um you are going to be designing for other people but you are really important right now yourself so think about what motivates you what inspires you and use that to to create better experiences for other people as well and um you know, knowing yourself is just as important as knowing the people you design for. So uh, just take good care of yourself and um, enjoy the whole process. And if you, if any of you students have questions, uh, you know, I'm sure they will come to me uh, through Nadia, but uh, I'm always interested in your experiences and uh, well, good luck to you.
And the last thing, uh, can you share very quickly about the learning experience um, design conference and the website and the community that is being built and like it's growing like <laughs> crazy now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we, um, there is a, uh, the central point basically is lxd.org, which is uh, our portal to the world of learning experience design. And right there, you can find several things, including um, our conference. We've been hosting a annual annual conference for six years. We started in 2016, um, and uh, we're so this is the sixth time, and we're doing it online. Last year was also online. Next year, maybe also because this is working really well so far, and you know, saving a lot of travel time, but. Um, because people from all over the world join this this conference and it's really focused on on bringing uh, together anyone who's interested in learning experience design so these are learning experience designers themselves but also other creative professionals educational professionals scientists artists anyone uh, can join in that in that regard and um this also says a lot about the status of the international lxd community which is kind of, um, because it's still quite new for, for most people, it still consists of people with very different backgrounds who are kind of growing more and more towards each other and towards this uh, central concept of learning experience design. And um, the, the, the really exciting thing right now is that anyone in the community you know, can play a role in, in in developing and shaping learning experience design for the future because there's so much more we can uh, discover about how learning experience design can work in specific situations and different uh, fields that can inspire us. Um, so um, it's still, it's very much alive and in progress and, and happening. And anyone who wants to uh, play a part, visit lxd.org visit our conference possibly um we also provide training but i don't want to you know make turn this into a commercial uh we try we do the conference really to to bring people together and make it really accessible and um we have a linkedin group as well uh quite easy to find the learning experience design community linkedin group so just check it out it's free uh sign up and uh get some uh get your dose of lxd <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Neil, so much. Have a great You're day. You're very welcome.